Alright, Dad, what game are we playing today? We are playing uh, Fortune and Glory. Whoa. Yes, that's a heavy box because it's got a lot of stuff in it. It's a big adventure. Worthy of a big box of stuff. So it would seem. But that's not the only big thing. You got this big rule book, which is a very hefty rule book, which you refer to. a lot of stuff. Yeah. I found, I've referred to many times because it's not always exactly where you want to find it, but you read it and say, oh, I know I found that somewhere. You have to go back through it. But now that we've played it, you don't need to refer to it as much. However, even though we have played one way, there's multiple ways you can play this. You can play it competitively, and you can also play it cooperatively. And you can play a basic game where you can play some advanced rules. Everything adds in more elements. So however you want to do it, whatever type of adventure, it's there for you. So it's pretty cool. But they also have quick start rules. So Whoa. much easier if you want to just get going on the basic game. That's easier to follow. And that is what I'll talk about here. I won't Alrighty. go into all the details. But the first thing you're going to want to start out is picking your characters. So here's all the different characters you can have. You can actually play up to eight players. That would be a long That'd game. That would be way we've, long. Yeah, we've done four. So, for example, let me look here at Jake Zane. You can see his card. He's got his nice playing piece. This tells you where his start city is, so I would put him in San Francisco to start, for, to start the game. But it also tells you a few things about him. Uh, it gives him some different uh, special abilities. All characters have different special abilities. It tells you how many wounds he can take before he's knocked out. And it tells you also how many dice he rolls depending on the adventure he's going in. Hmm. None of that makes sense to you right now, so I'll tell you about the adventures. What he's going to do is he's going to try to seek out fortune and glory, of course. So down over here we have our glory points and we have our fortune. And the way you win the game is by getting to 15 fortune. Which is the gold. Yes. Which is, so you've got your one piece and your five pieces. Um, however, there are cards that say so you have to actually earn more to win the game. But... Yeah, like how I had to earn <laughs> 19. That's so right. 15. So you're going to get those by completing dangers and getting artifacts. So over here is your artifacts. So to set on an adventure, first you take an artifact and an adventure, and you're going to have to find the Eyes of Darkness. Whoa. But you don't know where the Eyes of Darkness are, so you flip over your location card. And this says that the Eyes of Darkness are in Scandinavia. Of course. So here's Scandinavia. We put that little artifact on there. So you know that the yellow exactly. corresponds with the yellow. And you'll do that for the first four. So now you're going to find the Helmet of the Ancients. And you're going to pick your location card and find out that they are in the Andes. So we have the Andes down here in the Helmet of the Ancients. And then you do that for four. Yep, so we do that for four adventures. And then what are those numbers on the card? Yes, exactly. So this number here tells you how many dangers you must pass in order to get that. So once Jake gets to the Andes, here's the Andes, he's going for the Helmet of the Ancients, he has to pass three dangers. So he has to do three dangers to get... To be able to get this artifact. Which is five, right? Five gold, right. five Which fortune. he will get yep, five fortune when he sells it. So he'll take the artifact back to a city and then sell it for that much. So that'll tell you how much it's worth. So for example, the Eyes of Darkness, you have to complete five dangers to get three fortune. Eh, maybe I'm not going to go for that at first. Hmm. I'll go for the Helmet of the Ancients. So that's how you figure it. But the dangers are over here. So once I'm searching for that, I will take a look at, I will draw a danger card and this tells me what I have to do. This is a flying danger and I get three glory for completing that danger and here's what I have to do. I've got to roll my cutting dice and I have to get one success which is a six plus. So I look at Jake's card I see cutting he, since it's a cutting adventure he only gets two dice. However, so he only gets to roll two dice. He only gets to roll two dice. However the great thing is, is he's an ace pilot so he can add four adventure dice during any flying test. This happens to be a flying test, so he gets four more dice. So he gets to roll six dice. And that was because of his special ability. Yes. So he rolls six dice, and I did not get a six. Uh-oh. So I failed that. So what happens? I flip it over to the cliffhanger. Dun-dun-dun. Oh, boy. No parachutes. 
Yep, so all of a sudden I have no parachutes. I'm going to have a different cliffhanger, but I don't do that right now. I have to wait in this cliffhanger until my next turn. Of so course. then it goes on to the next player, does their adventure phase, and continues around. So mm. next time it's time to adventure, before I do anything else, I'm going to have to finish this cliffhanger. Well, how do you know a turn order? Yeah, good question. So right here <coughs> is a helpful, handy-dandy four-step process on what you do in a competitive Oh, I flight. love those. <laughs> exactly. It's always good to refer back to. The initiative phase starts it. That basically tells you who gets to go first, and you can find out because that comes in important. If two people are competing for the same treasure, the turn order makes a difference because they're going to have a race to see who can get it first. Hmm. So turn order makes a difference. So you'll roll to see who gets turnover, turn order. Then the move, you'll roll to see how you can move. This will tell you how far you can move, so I could move up to six spaces. Each spot from a city to a place is one move. When you go out to C, it'll tell you how many moves it takes to go through that C. So that's the way you move around the board. So everybody will move, make their movements, and then everybody does their adventure phase, which I already showed you a little bit of how Jake would which adventure. Which is the dangers. Yeah, exactly. And then you'll wrap things up by cleaning it up. So those are your basic turnover on the flip side is your cooperative game round. So if you're all doing it together, you're going to have a different <coughs> modes on what's going to happen, what you're going to do. But the basics are the same, and which is essentially rolling a lot of dice. Just a big dice rolling and, game. Yeah, so this game is total just for fun because uh, there's not a lot of strategy in it. Sure, you can figure out if you want to go to an adventure or not, where you want to do it, but it all comes down to the dice roll, where you, whether you succeed or not. So it can, it can last really long, like our first game did. Uh, plus we're well, first more. games always take a long time. Exactly. Uh, and going through it, but there's just so much here, so much to throw into it. So, for example, you can go into the cities. Cities are where you sell things. When you move into a city, so he goes into Moscow, you're going to flip a city card. And look, on this one, there's another danger. Of course. <laughs> car chase. So there's a downtown car chase, so I've got to complete that adventure. Uh, other city cards are going to say, oh, I can fully heal. If I were in a battle and I would taken some wounds, which are all over here, I've got my wound markers, so I can know how many wounds I take. I may go into a space where there are some Nazi soldiers or some mobs. As I move into that space, I'm going to have to fight them. Uh, in the advanced rules, you'll see here on the board, there's other symbols. Some of these adventures, some of the events that you get depend on the symbols. They're going to throw a mix into it where you can thwart your fellow travelers on their adventures by sending things after them. There's other event cards that happen. Um, an example, this one is an event card. If you have to draw an event card, this is going to send soldiers out. You get to pick where those soldiers get placed on the board. Uh, actually, you'll draw the locations for it. So there's a whole stack of adventures. Over here, you've got allies. I can go into the city and for some of the glory that when I've completed my dangers, I can buy some allies, which are going to give me more dice to roll, or it's going to give me more wounds or more combat experience. Uh, I can also buy a bunch of gear that are going to help me along the way that, again, are going to help me with more dice to roll. There's a whole bunch of things I can do. That and, is a lot of cards. And enemies to face. It just, it just packs it in. So every turn, there's just so much to do. There's no way I'm going to try to explain it all, but that's an epic adventure. Yeah. I'd say. So what would you rate Fortune and Glory? Oh, Fortune and Glory, so far, I haven't. we haven't played all of it. We haven't done the co cooperative mode, for example, so I can't rate it overall. But as far as the game experience, we've had a blast doing it. So it's a lot of fun. Yes, a lucky die roll, but as long as you're in the mood for something light and fun and you've got, a lot. Lot of time, <laughs> and you've got a lot of time, <coughs> then go for it. So we took to play in this uh, the weekend before school started, and it was a great way to get together and just play for some fun. Uh, on a long afternoon and we had a ton of fun so overall I'm gonna rate it a four because four. it's yep yeah. uh, again it depends on what mood you're in and how much time you've got uh, but when you're in that mood I don't think it's gonna be played very often we'll bring it out on special occasions maybe Christmas breaks things like that alright thanks dad you bet